So yeah, I'm Michael Harper. I am a Sun River resident. So Sun River is down or up the road, depending upon how you define down or up, uh, about 15 miles. Uh, so everybody in the room, uh, if you are working on more than one project right now that uh, really requires your attention, then you probably shouldn't be here anyway. Raise your hand, right? Okay, now keeping your hands up, how many of you also had to remove um, eight inches of snow from your driveway this morning? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so um, I am, uh, like I said, I live up in Sun River, and it uh, turns out I'm 50% of the uh, Sun River iOS developer community. Um, yeah, uh, there's another gentleman uh, by the name of Dick Lubke, uh, and we found each other on Twitter because... Uh, I, I think we're probably the only two people in Sun River on Twitter anyway. There are only about 2,500 people live out there anyway. So, this is awkward. Okay. I'm going to move this so it's a little bit less awkward. I appreciate the uh, guys who came in front of me and set the bar incredibly high for uh, uh, keynote presentations. I'm assuming that they're using keynote. I'm pleased to see all the uh, MacBooks in the audience. There was a time when, when that would have been, that never would have happened. Because we all think different now. Let's get on with, uh, with why I'm here. So um, just briefly, my road to Objective-C. Why am I talking to you about Objective-C? Uh, good question. You know, uh, okay, mobile developers. How many, how many mobile developers do we have out there? Okay, so. What's interesting um, is is where I got started, right? Um, anybody remember a language called Fortran? Oh yeah. Anybody uh, know about something called a prime mini computer? One. All right. Yeah. That's about how important that is in my life, right? <laughs> uh, my experience actually goes back before this 1980 starting point, but uh, that was like yellow spools of paper and uh, funky keyboards and 110 baht. Uh, not real applicable to what's going on today. Uh, but what I, what I did learn um, when I was at Cal Poly in the, in the uh, mid-80s was uh, I took this elective class called C, right? And uh, it was on this, this wacky platform called Unix. Um, and then from there, um, after I graduated, I, I went to work in San Francisco at an investment banking company and was working on uh, doing developments on Macs that actually weren't all in one, right? They they actually had a separate uh, keyboard monitor and, and base unit and they had color. Yeah, it was exciting. Um, so I, I taught myself C++, right? Kind of on the C continuum here. And then I encountered this goofy language, a, a project that I started working on on Next, and, and this goofy language is called Objective-C. So, you know, I'd gone from C to C++, and it's a good thing that I taught myself C++, and, and good thing I took the elective, because, um, you know, otherwise I would have been armed to face the world with Pascal, <laughs> right? Uh, so I ended up with the, it, working on this uh, Next Step project in the, in the mid-90s and, and encountered Objective-C, and then um, about 10 years later ended up porting that same project from um, next step to run on uh, Mac OS X, which I thought was really cool. And to be able to see the evolution of, of what it started on next. But I still thought Objective-C was relatively goofy. And then, uh, you know, we get the uh, iPhone SDK, and uh, we're doing uh, mobile development on iPhones and, and iPod Touch <coughs> with uh, Objective-C. So I, I couldn't resist the allure of, of writing iPhone apps. Just too sexy and too cool to be able to, you know, pull your phone out and go, I made this, right? Um, so I, I started doing Objective-C programming. I don't, I don't see any Ruby or anything else on there. I must have, I must have filled it in with something else. Oh yeah, Java. Uh, 
Yeah, so in the mid-90s, you know, um, let's see, that would be right about when my daughter was being born. Um, I already had a son living in Marin. Yeah, I had to do something to make some dough. So uh, that was Java Enterprise Development. Oh. So um, I, was, I was working for Sun and Stanford and uh, various other companies on this, this crazy platform called Tenga. Anybody remember Tenga, the precursor to uh, WebLogic? Um, which is now part of Oracle, is that right? Yeah. So Oracle is like, uh, there goes Sun, there goes uh, WebLog, you know, VBA, there goes um, ATG, anybody remember ATG Dynamo? Yeah, it's Oracle, it's like this black hole. Um, so I, I, I did uh, a lot of work, a lot of enterprise work in Java, and I did that for quite a while. Um, and then on the Java Posse podcast, if you don't listen to that, you should, because it's goddamn funny. Uh, and, and it's very interesting. A lot of uh, a lot of Android stuff is on there as well. Um, but anyway, I heard about Ruby uh, Ruby on Rails on the Java Posse podcast. And I went and I checked it out, and then uh, ended up being asked to work on a Rails project. Um, and from there, ended up working uh, on you know uh, a number of Rails projects. So that's. It's not a complete disconnect that I'm standing up here talking to you about Objective C, right? I do know a thing or two about Rails. Um, so, remember I was saying in the early 90s, I encountered this goofy uh, Objective C language? You know, what's with the goofy method calling syntax? You got square brackets around everything, you got method names and parameter names. Yeah, they have to name. They're a mile long. I mean, come on. So what's with this method selector? I mean, who would ever want to use a method selector? Why wouldn't you just call the method on, on the object? Come on, okay? And also, okay, remember, this is the this is 20 years ago, okay? So I'm just out of uh, college. Um, I'm in my mid-20s. I know everything, right? <laughs> uh, so, you know, what is this class method and category and protocol stuff? I, I don't need to know this, right? I mean, come on, really, seriously. Why would you... You want to use this? We've got C++. C++ rules, right? Um, but let me let me point out uh, briefly here that I worked on a C++ project uh, a couple of years ago, uh, which is definitely my last one ever. I have sworn it off completely. Ain't, ain't gonna ever happen again. But you know, this is 20 years ago. We don't need we don't need this Objective C stuff, right? So comparatively speaking, when I found out about Ruby on Rails and then um, I went to, um, you know, after, after working in Rails for a while, I, I went to an advanced Rails studio that was taught by Chad Fowler and uh, Dave Thomas and Mike Clark and had the moment of zen with, uh, with Craig Dave about Ruby, which is that everything is a method call and an object, and it's like, whoa, everything, whoa. You know, coming from a statically typed world of the, of the 80s and, and 90s with Java and C++ and all that stuff, it's like, Whoa, right? So what were my initial thoughts about Ruby? Well, you know, of course, <laughs> unicorns and rainbows. Uh, double rainbow. Uh, you can't really see it very well, but that is... Um, all the way. That, that, all the way. That is a proprietary picture that I took. Um, uh, that is... Uh, that, that's looking towards uh, Lanai from the Maui office. Right, so uh, it, it was great. I was working on a project over the, over last summer, and I we'd already planned this trip for you know a couple of weeks to Maui, and I just told them that I was working from the Maui office, which I was. I mean, I seriously I was, but that was the view from the Maui office. So initial Ruby thoughts: unicorns and rainbows. Um, the Maui office had a roof. <laughs> I took this. I took this outside. Um, the, the actual Maui office, yes, they have a roof. In fact, it had another uh, condominium upstairs. <laughs> so, you know, weigh the, weigh the two different uh, lists here, right? <laughs> I've got Objective C initial thoughts and I've got Ruby initial thoughts. And, and consider that there's 15 years of, of, of you know, experience and life experience uh, separating the two. But, I mean, it really was an really moment. Uh, comparing my, my initial thoughts about the two. And as I was working through Ruby, and also working on, on mobile at the same time, I realized there was stuff going on in Ruby that I do all the time. 
but I can do objective C. That I, that I didn't even clue into it until I started working with Ruby. <coughs> so let's talk about uh, the communisms, uh, with not the Karl Marx variety, but what uh, the, the two have in common, right? Um, so uh, there, there are a ton of things that, okay, that's hyperbole. There are a number of, of common things between Ruby and Objective-C. I'm going to talk about three of them that were important to me, okay? Uh, there are differences as well. Um, one of them, you compile things and the other you don't. Uh, I get that. But these are the, the three things that, that I found were uh, important to me that Ruby helped me to understand in Objective-C, okay? So one of them is the ability to modify classes and methods at runtime. And I did this yesterday in Ruby on a Rails project. Uh, I've been working mostly in mobile for the last year, but uh, I've been helping out in my copious free time on, uh, yeah, we all have copious free time, don't we? And we all work in it, don't we? Um, so yesterday I was actually using this capability in Ruby to, at runtime, uh, change out of that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> try that in C++. If you do try that in C++, tell me how you did it. Um, you can send a method to an object. Uh, I phrased this carefully. I didn't say you can call a method on an object because, duh, you can call a method on an object. We do that all day long. But the concept of separating the method from the object is kind of a, a, an interesting twist, uh, a different way of looking at it. I mean, uh, again, uh, you know, from C, well, we didn't have objects, right? But in C++, you couldn't really have a method live without an object. I mean, they were, you had, you had state and you had behavior, and those were all part of the, the class and part of the object. So the concept of just saying, oh, I've got this method, I'll wait till an object comes along, and then I will send the method to the object, and the object will respond to the method. You know, I, I, I guess um, messaging is, is the equivalent to what I'm trying to say here is a cool concept. And finally, of course, blocks of code. Blocks of code that aren't um, contained in a method, basically. Uh, you know, blocks of code that you can pass around. Uh, in Ruby, blocks of code that you can write at runtime. That's really cool. I did look up metaprogramming for Objective-C, and uh, got nowhere and realized, uh, well, that's because all your code has to be compiled. So if somebody can figure out how to do metaprogramming in Objective-C, uh, tell me about it after, after class here. Love to, love to hear. Um, so let's get to an example of this. Adding a method at runtime to a class in Ruby, right? So this is what happens when I, I have this, this string, right? And well, in Ruby, I'm going to see sugar. And I, I call the ferment method on it, right? Uh, it says, uh, there's no ferment method on the string class. So I can solve this problem simply in Ruby by opening up the, uh, the class and defining the ferment method, which of course uh, changes all instances of sugar to alcohol. And um, then when we run that at the bottom, uh, you can see that, that it works, right? So uh, what does the same kind of thing look like in, uh, in Objective-C? Uh, well, there's the error, and it's a different kind of error than you get uh, in the Ruby equivalent. It's this thing I alluded to earlier called a compiler, right? So you can't even, <laughs> you can't even compile this code uh, because the ferment method doesn't exist. So you have to create it. So what do you oh, do? in the wrong place, so the window came up. <sighs> okay, so um, at runtime, and I have elided a bunch of code from <laughs> uh, that, that doesn't really matter. Um, and I've also gone too far ahead, haven't I? Yeah. Yeah. I've method at runtime, right? Okay. Oh, oh, notes came up. That's what confused me. I have notes on this slide. You can't see them. <laughs> All right, so let's rewind here. We're talking about adding a method at runtime in Objective-C. So what you end up doing is you have to, in the, in the interface uh, definition for the class, you create this thing that's called a category. And that's, that's what putting the parentheses and some 
some name after uh, the class there, right? You see interface NS string, NS string being the string class in, um, in, in iOS and in Mac OS 10 and the next step. That's why there's the NS. Okay, raise your hand if you knew that. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, I create this category. I add the ferment method that returns a string, and then I implement it, right? So basically, the objective C equivalent of opening up a class and adding a method. And then when I run it at the bottom, um, you get the result that you want to see. Okay? Compile and run it. Um, so when have I actually used this? I've used this uh, particularly on NS string to add base64 encoding. And encoding. I mean, it's a real natural thing. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure I stole it off the web somewhere. Uh, but the ability to do that in Objective-C is great, and I never would have thought of that if I hadn't been a Rails developer and, and seen it done there. They do it in Rails, right? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> Active support is pretty much that. Okay, so sending a method at runtime, this concept of separating the method itself from the object that it's going to be executed on. Uh, was it was another kind of, oh wow that's kind of cool uh, thing for me so uh, again going back to our, our uh, fermenting a string and nobody, nobody, I didn't get anything no love for the changing sugar to alcohol in the ferment method man the crowd you guys already had a couple of beers huh um, so you can you can see towards the bottom there uh, I'm sending s dot send and then I pass in the ferment symbol right so I'm I'm, I'm saying uh, I'm sending that message to that object, and it's the equivalent of calling the method, right? I'm sure that, there's, that there are subtle differences there, but essentially that's what's going on for the purposes of my example. Um, how do you do the same thing in Objective-C? Well, you have this thing called a selector, right? This is a thing that I didn't understand 20 years ago. Why would you, uh, why would you uh, create a, a method selector? And you see this in all caps, SEL, that's the type of, uh, of variable that you can assign a selector to. And then you can call on an object, perform selector, and then you pass in the selector, okay? So, you know, going back to, to Michael 20 years ago, well, why wouldn't you just call the damn method directly? Uh, well, let me tell you why. Uh, there, uh, for example, in iOS and macOS 10, there are certain things, uh, certain methods that you need to always call on the main thread. And you may not be in the main thread for, for one reason or another. So you can actually call perform selector on main thread. And then you see here, you, with the with object, you can pass in, uh, in this case, uh, 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 the text that you want to actually set in the current time view. This is from a, a boxing timer app that, I, uh, that I've used for about four years as an example to continue to learn personally uh, iOSisms, right? So here's another one down in, in the bottom half, creating a timer, right? You're going to schedule a timer with a time interval of one second. The target is self, in this case it's a model, and then here's the selector that I'm going to call. So two real good instances in iOS where you do need to have that method separated from the object that you're going to call it. Kind of cool. Um, there's also this class called NS Invocation. I took a look at that because um, I've never used it, but I took a look at that because it, it is apparently the, the blanket, totally flexible and abundantly complex way of, of doing the separation of target and method and parameters and return value and uh, the amount of code required to do something as simple as one of these two is pretty impressive, but uh, that's, that's kind of the pure uh, way of, of calling a method on an object if you, if you really want to get down with. So the last, uh, last bit I have for you here is blocks, right? So, um, and this is a, a fairly contrived example, but what I did was I added a yield to the ferment method uh, that I used in an example. Um, 
And that way, if I think there is a block that's passed into the ferment call, it will yield to that to get the value that we're going to replace sugar with in this string, right? So uh, I have uh, two, two calls to ferment, one without any, any block, and that, that is what we did before. And then I have one that does some very simple string concatenation, right? Some simple math on the beer string. So do you have any beer, beer, beer? Um, so that, that's that's a, a very simple example of blocks in, in Ruby, and you guys all know that we use blocks like crazy in Ruby and Rails uh, and iterators. Um, you know, uh, when you're going through an array and you call dot each and you pass in a block, uh, you know, the the syntax there is, is wonderful. So how does that relate to um, to Objective C? So. Something popped up here again, and it's got to be Okay, so um, here, here's the equivalent in Objective C. You have to declare, uh, or you have to write a little more obtuse code. Basically, where you can, yeah, uh, but you can do it. You can do it. It's, it's really not that bad. You know, just figuring out what that uh, what that definition of the block is 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 the hardest part for me, and it always involves a, a carrot. Um, um, so anyway, uh, if you look down near the bottom, you can see that I'm, pass I'm making the, the ferment call with uh, nil, and that's kind of the equivalent of not passing in a block in Ruby. Uh, and then I'm passing in a, a block that returns beer times three, so that's the equivalent of, of the beer times three in the Ruby, right? Uh, again, I mean, it's a, it's a compact example of passing blocks around, um, but it really makes your life a lot easier, specifically for me, in dealing with animations in iOS, because you can pass in, for example, when the animation is done, run this block of code, right? And I don't have to create another class, or I don't have to create a, a delegate method to get called afterwards. Now I just pass in this block of code. That's great. So, um, anybody notice anything about this code? It's, I mean, is, is there a times method on the string? No, but I needed one. So, um, you know, I, I did that thing that I was talking about earlier where I added a method at runtime uh, so that I could <coughs> have a times operator and not an operator, but a times method and, and basically do the equivalent of what we can easily do in Ruby. See, I'm not saying that, gee, isn't it great, we can do this stuff in Objective-C just as easily as we can in Ruby. I'm saying, gee, isn't it neat, we can actually do it. Okay, now, uh, okay, I've got to get this stuff in place. Okay, that's good, got it, great. All right, so um, just a, a real quick example here of making array elements do stuff. I was talking about this uh, a little bit earlier about how nice it is, the syntax that we have in Ruby uh, to do this stuff. I really appreciate it. Um, they've given us some helper methods for things like NSArray so that we can make objects perform selector. Remember that thing I was talking about, about having the method separate from the actual object? Yeah, kind of cool. Um, you can also do the same thing with a block, block of code, passing some code and have the, uh, have the object passed in, have each element in the array passed into the block. Right. So, what have I learned? Um, other than, man, uh, this is a really cool room. Um, I, I, we had a buddy's 50th birthday party next door, so I know about that, but I didn't know about this room. I think it's really cool. That's one of the things that I've learned. Um, <laughs> Um, but anyway, uh, I've, I've learned that I love Ruby. I mean, I just really do. Obviously, I've been doing this a long time. Right? <laughs> um, and I remember when Java came along and I thought, this is great. It's taking all the rough edges away uh, from C++. I don't have to worry about memory management anymore. Java, thank you very much. And then I spent seven years, you know, eight years doing enterprise development. It's like, Okay, well, we've replaced the sharp edges of C++ with all this XML configuration, right? 
uh, hoping not accidental violence, right? Um, and, and then Ruby comes along, and it's like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <coughs> and then what do I end up doing? I end up doing Android development, and that's where I quit Java. <laughs> um, but it's not that I hate Java. It's that I hate Java Enterprise, right? Nothing wrong with hating Java. <coughs> but I, but I, I, I do. I really love Ruby. I really, really do. Um, what else have I learned? I learned that I understand Objective-C a whole lot better than I did 20 years ago. I don't know, maybe because of the passage of time, maybe because of the fact that I realized that I don't know everything anymore, right? Um, that probably took a while for me to understand. Um, and wouldn't it be awesome if Ruby were sanctioned for iOS development? Yeah, Mac Ruby. Um, uh, I'm sorry? They're starting to do iOS dev with MacRuby. Cool. Can you, can you uh, circle back with me after and, and tell me more about that? Awesome. Okay, so, so um, Ruby, you know, I love about it that it's so expressive and efficient, and then, you know, the moment of Zen with, with Dave and um, metaprogramming, you know, double-edged sword, certainly, but isn't it cool? I mean, you know, it's pretty damn cool. Um, and Objective-C, you know, my, my problem, my initial um, experience with Objective-C was really tainted by the fact that I came from such a statically typed world, right? I mean, that's all I was taught in college. Um, I have this crazy computer science degree, and we, you know, we learned about uh, lots of strictly typed stuff, you know, dynamic stuff only happened in this one class where we wrote one program in each, each of, you know, 12 different languages. We actually call them programs back then. Um, so, I think that Objective-C was tainted for me by this heavily, strictly typed history that I had. And by going to Ruby and, and, and the freedom that I was allowed there, I really started to understand Objective-C and what, what it's, uh, why it is so cool. Um, I hope I can give that to you today to some degree. Shameless self-promotion. There seems to be some of that in the previous uh, uh, presentation, so I'll go ahead and do that myself. Uh, I, I told you that I live in Sun River, and if you haven't been there, uh, it is a destination resort area with 35 miles of bike paths that lots of tourists get on um, their bikes, and they uh, strap their kids in the trailer, and they head off, and they don't know where the fuck they are. Right? <laughs> uh, there are, uh, I think we're up to, 11 traffic circles, um, and interestingly, in the upper right-hand corner, there was supposed to be another traffic circle that is missing, and it's, it, that would have been Circle 8. So there's actually no Circle 8 in Sun River. It goes from 7 straight to 9. So the joke is uh, that the tourist is being particularly um, <coughs> special, uh, as tourists are wont to be, uh, as in make me a latte and make it a good one. Uh, we will send them to Circle 8 and tell them to take the first one. <laughs> anyway, go check that out, www.circle8.net, Android and, uh, and iOS, so, and the shameless self-promotion. Here's where you can find me on the interwebs, I'm <coughs> Hoppa on, uh, on Twitter, uh, that's because I have a 40-year-old uh, BMW Bavaria, no it's not a, a, a 2002, it's got two more doors, right? And I'm, I'm part of a group of people that keeps those cars alive. So um, that is a Germanization of, of my, my stature. Dr. Hoppa. Um, Standalonecode.com, that's me. Standalone code, that's me. And on GitHub, I'm M. Harper. Sorry, it's kind of boring. So with that, I am going to ask somebody to go get me. And what do you want? Uh, IPA, and uh, my final admonition to you is to go write a test, right? Thank you to um, Matt and Mark and Josh and Mike, and uh, is somebody else? Toby. 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 <laughs> the guy who's getting me up here. Thank you, thank you uh, for having me, guys. I, I appreciate it. Um, thanks, uh, Chris, for coming out all the way from DC. I appreciate that, and I hope you learned something. Sure. Does anybody have a question for me? If I don't know the answer, I'll make it up. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> That's a good question. Um, Make it up. 80s or um, Genesis? Uh, the 80s were where I discovered Genesis. Um, went to several Genesis concerts, as a matter of fact. Um, the 80, oh, uh, we pretty much had parity between the US dollar and the British pound, which was great because I was in abundance in three months. That was it cooler? Um, but was it cooler? Like temperature-wise. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I was living in the Bay Area, and so uh, compared to here, uh, it was much warmer. Mike, do you always go to 11 a.m. provider to go to work? Actually, uh, <laughs> that's a really good question. Um, <laughs> I know you're not going to believe this, but that's my son's reminder for him to go to work at 11. He's a lifeguard at night since I'm How is he going to get there if uh, he doesn't get the reminder? <laughs> <laughs> share you with him. Can we heckle you some more? <laughs> Do I do much TDD and iOS development? I do as much as I can. Uh, that was one of the things that um, that R Rails brought to me was test driven development, and, and then I read uh, Uncle Bob's three rules for test driven development and didn't understand them. And then about a year later, I read them again and then I understood them, and that was another moment for me. Right um, on iOS. It's, I find it more difficult to do thorough test driven development like we can do in Rails. Um, it's, it's, it's slow and, and not well instrumented in my experience. Uh, I haven't gone deep on the sort of in-application testing you can do, not super deep. So um, I tend to limit my test driven development to uh, more model based stuff. Stuff that doesn't require me to fire up the application, you know, API testing, uh, model testing, and stuff like that. So it's it's you know half to be in iOS testing. Android is it's fairly similar for me. Yeah. Uh, did you find your transition to Ruby weird as well from the start? Did I find my transition to Ruby weird? Um, weird is the wrong word. Uh, challenging uh, at times, for sure. Um, I, I think it was like, what, you mean I don't have to define all this crap up front? Uh, I don't have to define the type of this variable that I'm assigning to? Uh, what's all this magic that's going on in, in Rails, you know, the metaprogramming in particular with Active Directory? Um, so not weird, more um, uncomfortable to begin with. And then especially after, after uh, Dave Thomas, you know, the moment was done with Dave Thomas, it's like, oh, this is awesome. But there was definitely a transition in thinking.